Aha. Kannst du noch mal kurz mit meiner Maus äh, aufs... Achso, nee, warte mal, kann ich selber. Aufs E-Mail-Postfach. Wo finde ich das jetzt? Gibst du mir ein Zeichen, Marcel? Okay, kannst du das Mikro runterdrehen vom Telefon? Ach, hier habe ich mir auch schon richtig hingestellt. Okay. Okay, ich glaube, wir können anfangen. Sagst du mir Bescheid? Es sollte laufen. Okay. So, so there is a timeline between of uh, 20 seconds. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm very proud and I'm very happy to um, present here from um, Görlitz Gorgelitz uh, our online seminar about multilingual websites. We start in um, a couple of minutes. We still have some time. We welcome you um, here from uh, Görlitz, as I already mentioned. Um, in the online stream, there is also um, Marcel um, from North Rhine-Westphalia. He's supporting us with the YouTube live stream. And our uh, key speakers, we have today three of them live in our online seminar session. Um, we, or oh, I am very happy to welcome later Mr. Oke Okere. He's right now in Lagos, Nigeria. Then I'm very happy to welcome as well Miklos Truskochi um, from Luxembourg, where he's located at. And um, Mr. Gurka Moral, he is in Bilbao in Spain, um, is his residence and um, working field and, and working place. And uh, the other two speakers, this is Professor Crutch. Um, he's the rector of our host organization of the Enterprise Europe Network. And uh, Mrs. Crail, she is a member of the European Parliament. They will be um, not available today, but I'm very happy uh, that they um, presented um, some words um, and, and we recorded a small video speech. And so I'm very happy to welcome um, all our guests. Um, please give me feedback if there is an hi. Nice to be on the seminar. All right. Um, there is Mr. Mikhail Bukowski. Uh, he's here in the seminar and he wrote a commentar. Uh, please give me feedback if there is something not working like the sound. Um, my question is, if with, this, if with the sound is everything correct, we still have some minutes to test with the audience here. So... Perfect. Ah, okay. Everything is perfect. From Italia. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we also have uh, friends from Italia here uh, live. Um, uh, perfect. Okay. We, uh, I saw already that there are um, already 31 uh, participants in our online seminar. And so I'm very, very happy. And I also would like to thank um, my EN partners from RUS. Um, from North Rhine Westphalia, from uh, Offenbach am Main, um, from Karlsruhe, from Olsztynie in Poland, and also from Hotato in Portugal. And um, hopefully, this will be a good start uh, in the beginning for organizing multinational or transnational webinars uh, within the Enterprise uh, Europe network. So, enjoy our test. You see, I'm a little bit nervous, and um, Marcel, uh, I would like to ask you to start to play with the video with the welcome speech of Professor Crutch, and afterwards with Constanze Kriel. Thank you for your attendance and your participation. Thank you. Thank you, Tobias. Yeah. 
just checking that you can hear me. You can hear me, right? Yes. Okay. But okay. Just wait. Uh, okay. Please uh, wait because right now we play uh, the video, the welcome speech of Professor um, Crutch. Just a second with your presentation. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you, Marcel. Okay. Thank you. Dear ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to welcome all of you to our online seminar about multilingual websites. I'm talking to you as a rector of our University of Applied Sciences in the border region between Poland, Czech Republic and Germany. Our organization is involved in a variety of programs and projects. One project is the Enterprise Europe Network, in short EEN. The EEN supports small and medium-sized enterprises and helps us to transfer knowledge and technical know-how into the region. Our university and its two campi, one in Zittau and one in the European border city, görlitz gorzelitz are the center of the academic life in Upper Lusatia. Marcel? Openness and participation are the foundation for our common actions. I'm proud to underline the fact that we are among Germany's top performing universities of applied science in the terms of science and academic conception. Ah, okay, the University clear. of Applied Sciences Zittau Görlitz uh, provides innovation in three, three focal research areas. So the, the first, energy and the environment. Ja, deswegen sagst du mir kurz Second, <laughs> transformation processes in industry and society. And third, materials, structures, and surfaces. This research area are supported by the Fraunhofer Institute for Machine Tools and Forming Technology, and the institute is branch in Zittau. I would like to thank Mrs. Grail as a member of the European Parliament and a member of the Committee in Regional Development for her input. Thank you very much for Mr. Okere from Nigeria who invites us to follow his perspective on multilingualism as a chance for small and medium sized enterprises to manage the European single market and other non-European markets. Mr. Trukocci from the DG Connect presents us the idea of what hundreds of translators and IT specialists creating during the last decades, a tool for automated translation. Thank you in advance. Last but not least, thank you from Mr. Moral, who show us how an European agency, namely the European Agency for Safety and Health at Work, manage their challenges in translating their information into 27 different languages. Finally, I would like to thank the staff of our University of Applied Sciences and the EEN team for the international cooperation in preparing this virtual seminar, which is listed in the official catalog for the European Small and Medium Science Enterprises Week. We hope that all technical details are working and wish you a pleasant experience about multilingualism in our not only virtual world. Stay healthy. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor Kratsch, for your introducing and welcome words. Now I would like to introduce Mrs. Constanze Krehl. She is a member of the European Parliament and also a member of the Committee on Regional Development in the European Parliament. And she is talking about Europe nearby and for you. Thank you. I welcome you to this and I hope that you have a good exchange in the next uh, hours, next days uh, with each other. Europe is an exchange of uh, different member states, uh, of, uh, together of different uh, languages, of different cultures. And this all uh, makes it possible that uh, with a different background, you have a lot of uh, knowledge about the other, about the other cultures, and this uh, creates a very positive um, possibility for work, for living, and uh, to live with each other. 
language and the knowledge of languages is uh, essential uh, in this uh, multicultural union. And uh, so uh, I'm, we, can, we can learn a lot of each other uh, when we can speak with each other and can understand each other. And uh, in the European Parliament uh, we can speak in our mother tongues and uh, we have uh, the in interpretation in every language back when we are speaking in an official meeting. That's grateful because uh, this is also part of our democracy. It is not necessary that you speak another language when you want to become a member of the European Parliament. This is part of democracy that everybody uh, independent of the knowledge of languages or of, uh, if you were in high school or not, uh, that you can participate in this important politic political work. But on the other side, it's very helpful if you learn languages and can speak with uh, each other in a language which is understandable and you can uh, speak with each other uh, without the support of the interpreters. That is especially helpful in working groups or in a direct contact with colleagues and uh, so both is important to have the possibility to use your own language and to learn other languages to, for a better understanding uh, of your colleagues, of your friends uh, and uh, so uh, both is a very important. Uh, that's why on the one side the European Union supports the, the existence of a lot of languages and on the other side has programs that uh, young people can, or even older people, can learn more languages. And in the moment we have, uh, for example, uh, also digital um, projects and programs, uh, for example, this e-translation tool, which can be used by the, uh, for example, for the, the small and medium enterprises, uh, that they can uh, make their offers in, in a lot of, member, uh, of uh, languages of the member states. And this is, could be very helpful for the small and medium enterprises uh, because, of course, not everybody speaks three, four, or five, or six uh, languages. And so uh, this uh, uh, service can be used by the small and medium enterprises. Um, and this is especially very helpful because the small and medium enterprises they use this uh, single market, the European Union, as their market. That's why it's very important that they can make their offers uh, in, in, everybody, in every uh, member state. And uh, on the other side, the small and medium enterprises are the biggest part of the, uh, of the economy uh, in the European Union. And so it's really necessary and helpful if then we can support them. Anyway, I want to thank, on the one side, uh, for the hard work of the tr uh, interpreters and translators, because of course we have also to translate uh, the legislation in every member uh, state in, the, uh, in their languages. Uh, it is a very hard work for of the interpreters, because they have to follow us. They have to look what they mean, what they think, what they're feeling on the one side and have to uh, understand what we, we are saying and immediately have to interpret this. This is very a huge work and uh, thank you again uh, for their work. And on the other side, I want to, say, uh, to thank uh, the, uh, the small and medium enterprise, the entrepreneurs there, um, that uh, they are so engaged in the single market. And I hope even with this crisis we have in the moment in the European Union, that we can very quickly overcome this crisis and that the, uh, the economy is growing sustainable uh, but growing again uh, after this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, finally, I want to thank you that you participate in this. I wish you all the best for your future and maybe we see each other in Brussels or somewhere else in Europe.
okay. Yes, okay. Uh, okay, so um, I just repeat again, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, so uh, right now I'm happy to introduce um, Mr. Ok Okere. Uh, he's from Lagos, Nigeria um, and represents Hofstede Insights and will give us his perspective on European or on multilingualism. And um, I'm very happy to welcome you. Ok. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tobias. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, nice to be uh, here with everyone. Um, so I'll try and make this very quick because I know that our time is not very much. Uh, so, to Tobias, could you help with the next slide? Yes. So a quick introduction of myself. I am a consultant and I've been here in Nigeria for over 20 years working with uh, various types of clients in finance, manufacturing, telecoms. Uh, I, I have interests and uh, competencies in strategy, business analysis, learning and development, finance, program management, and particularly culture, organizational culture and intercultural management. Mm -hmm. Like Tobias said, next slide, please. I represent Hofstede Insights. Uh, Hofstede Insights is uh, on the next slide, yes, thank you. Hofstede Insights is a worldwide network of experts and we focus on organizational culture and intercultural management. Mm -hmm. So I want to quickly start with uh, the next slide, please. <laughs> yes, next slide, please. So I want to quickly start from an economic angle. Uh, let's look at the, the, the world today as we know it. Um, in terms of the share of the world's GDP, this is basically a picture that shows how the world's wealth is uh, distributed and how uh, transactions, as it were, are distributed across the world. Uh, what we see is the European Union, for instance, is just a little bit less than one quarter of the world's GDP. And this uh, this picture uh, basically suggests to even the smallest SMEs, whether you are in Europe or Africa or anywhere, that you can actually uh, leverage technology by adapting your websites to reach a much, much bigger market. Uh, we see that happening already uh, with um, uh, Asian companies, small Asian companies reaching out to clients in different parts of the world. African companies as well can reach out to clients in different parts of the world. And European uh, companies as well can reach out to clients in different parts of the world if they are able to connect with them. So it's important for us to think global think that to see that the world is a lot bigger than our regions, wherever the region might be. Um, next slide, please, to pass. So this is the world's GDP when you compare uh, the developed nations uh, versus the emerging economies or the, uh, the developing nations. Um, at the moment, developed economies account for about 57% of the world's GDP and developing economies, uh, countries like Nigeria, countries like uh, China, India, they account for 43% of, um, of the world's economy. But take a look at the population, the, the size of the, of the market, if you might say. Uh, the developed economies are currently 15% of uh, the world's population and the developing economies, the emerging economies, are 85% of the world's population. So in terms of people who are uh, able to buy your goods and services, you have more people in the developing economies. So may we move to the next slide? Thank you. So the interesting thing, of course, is that the developing economies are growing two times as fast as the developed economies. So the growth you see in the developing economies is twice as fast. This is data from uh, 2019 from Unctad Start. Mm -hmm. So this is important for you uh, if you are an SME, when you are thinking about where you want to uh, take your products to. Uh, indeed, at the moment, you would well to trade in the developed economies. However, if you're thinking about the future of business, it is important to have some presence in the developing economies because they are growing very fast, as a matter of fact. Uh, Tobias, please, could we have the next slide? 
So opportunities exist regardless of um, where you you find people, whether they are in developed or developing economies. Even in the developing economies, there is demand for goods and there is demand for services. And you can also buy goods and services from uh, developing economies as well. So it is possible for you to trade, either to sell to them or to buy to buy from them, regardless of where people are. It's quite important to note that point uh, so that we can have a broader view of the world and we can have a broader view of uh, possibilities that we can uh, attain for our businesses. Will we move to the next slide, please. So when you want to expand your market, it is very important to consider the language of your market. Um, you need to speak the language of your target market. 72% of consumers, and this is from a study that was done, that was published in the Harvard Business Review, <coughs> HBR in 2012, 72% of, cost of consumers, uh, they spend most or all of their time on websites in their own language, so in a language that they understand. So 72.1% of consumers spend most or all of their time using websites that are in their own language. And then about the same uh, number as well, about 72% will are more likely to buy a product that gives them information in their own language. So if you are a business, for instance, and you're stationed in Denmark, and perhaps you might have a Danish uh, website. It is important if you want to connect with uh, customers in the rest of the world, perhaps you want to include uh, other website, um, uh, other versions of your website in other languages so that consumers can see products, your products or services in their own language or in their preferred language, and they can interact better with you. And the last uh, statistic I have there is that um, over half of the customers, and this is a very interesting one, I think, over half of the customers, 56% of consumers, said that the ability to um, obtain information in their own language is more important than price. And I think that that is a very good one for uh, businesses to consider, that uh, if, you, if, you cons if you think about it, um, you might actually be able to make more profit if you communicate to your potential market in their own languages. They are, they are more than half of the consumers are not as price sensitive when the information is, is provided in their own language. It doesn't mean that they disregard price completely. It just means that the fact that the communication and the information is in their own language makes them much more uh, uh, eager to accept that product. Uh, next slide, please. So what are the languages spoken in the world? Since we said you need to communicate in the language of your market, uh, the languages spoken in the world of the, at the moment, uh, now this information is uh, drawn from virtual capitalists, as you can see the information down there. Um, English is the world's uh, most spoken language, and over a billion people speak English. Um, Mandarin Chinese, about 1.1 billion, so just about uh, 20 million uh, difference between English and Chinese. And then Hindi, Spanish, and Arabic, those are the major languages spoken in the world. In the next slide, we will see the languages spoken in Europe. In the next slide, you see the languages spoken across Europe again. And now, this information was drawn from various websites, as you can see, various uh, uh, data sources, as you can see below. English, again, tops, uh, the top five languages. Now, we're, to we're not talking about native uh, languages. And we're not talking about, so we're not talking about the native uh, speaking population, so not people who speak English as a first language. No, we're talking about the combination of people across Europe that speak English. Uh, 281 million people uh, across Europe. Uh, and in, in uh, the next language, the next most popular language is Russian, 120 million people. French, 89, German, 81, and um, Spanish, uh, 52 million. So um, the next slide, I'm going to talk about the languages we speak here in Africa. Uh, here in Africa, the most popular language as well is English. Uh, 658 million people are the populations of the countries that have English as their official language. So I need to make this clear. The official languages now, we're looking at the 
country populations with official languages uh, because we don't have exact records as to how many people actually speak these languages. But you have countries like Nigeria, which are over 200 million people. Um, Nigeria is over 200 million people, and the official language in Nigeria is English. South Africa is another big country. The official language is English, and Kenya, and other countries like that. These countries together make up 658 million people in Africa. Uh, French is the next most popular uh, language in Africa, uh, official language in Africa. Uh, you have 439 million people whose countries uh, adopt French as an official language. Uh, Arabic uh, is the next uh, most popular language spoken across Africa with 387 million people. Portuguese, uh, particularly because of uh, um, Mozambique and Angola and a few other smaller African countries, Together, they make up about 68 million people that have uh, Portuguese as their official language, and around 1 million people have Spanish as their official language. So uh, these statistics I've shown so far would, would basically reveal the fact that if you have a multilingual website, especially with some of these uh, popular languages spoken across the world uh, and in various uh, continents, including Europe and Africa, you will be able to connect with possible trade partners and do more business. So in the next slide is, a, is, a, is a, a picture about Africa in the next slide that basically shows you where the languages are spoken. As you can see, the blue and the light orange is English and French, countries that have English and French as uh, official languages. Uh, and then some countries uh, combine Arabic and French, and some countries combine Arabic and English. And uh, one country combines French and English as their official languages. And you can see if you uh, have a website in English or in French or in Portuguese, then basically you would cover, most likely you would cover around 94% of Africa in terms of reaching out to your customers. 51 out of 54% of African countries use as at least one European language as their official language. So if you have a multilingual website in one or more of these languages, it can facilitate trade. And when I'm speaking about trade here, not just exports to Africa, but imports from Africa as well. Uh, it can facilitate international partnerships, and it can also facilitate uh, exchange in, uh, of ideas or other transactions with uh, Africans and African businesses as well. So, But they will not uh, likely connect with you if they do not find information about your business, about your organization in a language that they speak. And um, the next slide. I will be glad to take your questions. So that's all for me on this. Thank you. So, um, Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for your um, for your input and and for your impressive um, data that you presented. And I think it is very interesting um, for for SMEs in in Europe to to know how many languages are or how many people speak uh, the European languages. I mean, this should be a further discussion. Um, having the the background of of uh, of these languages and the history of uh, why these languages are located there, um, but um, as you mentioned already, it was also a very important uh, point of view from my side um, that European companies could also use multilingual websites to um, cooperate and to discuss with um, African companies in order to import some products. Um, okay, if you have any questions, um, please write us here um, directly to ein at hszg.de. This will be um, sent directly to our second monitor and um, we will answer your questions um, uh, personally. And also you see here um, a web link where you can um, answer some questions about our survey after the um, webinar. 
And there is also a QR, QR code um, where you can um, find further information. Okay, I'm very proud to um, introduce now Miklos Kocci from, um, from Luxembourg. He's representing the uh, DG Connect and is responsible for the new, like brand new, um, almost uh, launched this year, brand new e-translation tool. And I'm very happy uh, to give you the words and the stage is yours, Miklos. Thank you, Tobias. Just give me a feedback. Do you hear me correctly? Yes, I hear you correctly. Fine, thanks. Um, yeah, before introducing myself and uh, the e-translation tool, just uh, to tell you that I was very happy to hear OK this presentation about the importance of, of multilingualism and multilingual websites. And um, yeah, so the subjects are very closely connected. So my name is Miklos Truskoci. I'm a policy officer in DG Connect of the European Commission. And uh, I work more precisely in the multilingualism sector in directorate data. In this sector, we work mainly on research and development and deployment projects in language technologies and language data collection. On the next slide, uh, you will see the broader context. So the multilingualism of the EU with 500 million consumers and uh, 24 official languages means challenges on the one hand and opportunities on the other hand. What are the challenges? So huge market, which is fragmented by several languages, uh, the domination of English, the fact that linguistic discrimination has social and economic impacts and or markets are dominated by non-European solutions. On the other hand, we have the opportunities. So recent breakthroughs in language technologies offer for the first time truly cost-effective multilingual solutions. Language technologies can support the linguistic diversity, worker mobility, to cross-border public services, it can also foster citizens' engagement in democratic processes and ultimately cross-border trade and e-commerce. Uh, and um, as we speak about language technologies, here we arrive, thank you, uh, on, the, on this slide we arrive at the translation, which is one of these uh, solutions. So what is e-translation? E-translation is a free of charge, state-of-the-art machine translation service, which provides, provides on the one hand, so translation uh, of text snippets or documents between all EU official languages and more. Uh, it preserves the format and formatting uh, of the original documents and provides a quality machine translation in a secure system that protects privacy you know, <laughs> uh, and passes on intellectual property rights to the requester of the machine translation text. So e-translation covers, once again, the 24 official languages. This means already 552 language combinations. In addition to these languages, it also serves Icelandic and Norwegian because Iceland and Norway are so-called connecting Europe facility contributors. Moreover, we progressively include socially or economically important languages such as Russian, Chinese, uh, and later on we might introduce Arabic, Japanese, Turkish, and others. So uh, preserving the format, this means that you introduce, for example, a PowerPoint file uh, into e-translation and you get back your uh, PowerPoint document translated in the chosen language. Uh, there are different formats you can introduce if you use the web interface access. So you can introduce Word, Excel, PowerPoint, PDF, open document formats for office applications, translation memory formats, 
and also different web page formats. Um, as to the formatting, so you can feed in uh, a formatted document with specific fonts, headings, etc., and you will get your translation in the same formatting. We consulted several SMEs in almost all the sectors in Europe and tested with the e-translation, and they were very happy with these features. But uh, we will come back to the testing in a few minutes. On the next slide, uh, you will see how e-translation works. So e-translation is built on over 1 billion translated sentences over 20 years stored and managed in a database is called uh, Euramis. Um, so e-translation is built on human translated and human revised parallel sentences in the official languages, very clean data. This is also the reason why e-translation doesn't need uh, user's data. Your documents are not used for any machine learning purposes. So with e-translation, your data will not be used nor reused. Uh, where does these 1 billion sentences come from? On the one hand, uh, they come from legal documents like directives, regulations, and so on, and key political documents, but not only because uh, these 1 billion sentences come also from general information published in all official languages, such as press releases, surveys, website content, so on. And of course, not only from the European Commission, but also from the European Parliament and other EU institutions. Apart from Euramis, we also feed data into e-translation as we work on language data collection through specific projects in the member states in order to further improve the system. Now we know what is e-translation and how it works. On the next slide, let's see who can use it. Uh, no, sorry, we will see why to use it before. So e-translation, as I already said, it's a cutting edge or state-of-the-art neural machine tool machine translation tool, among other currently available top solutions. It can um, help you to translate uh, documents uh, quickly. For example, if you are hesitating whether you should let it translate it by a human translator, you just feed your document into e-translation, and you will have a gist of the document. And of course, if you find the machine translated document interesting or useful for your business, you can still be a hum uh, your human translation to have a 100% reliable translated document. For some professions or in some specific situations, data privacy and keeping the copyright can be very appreciated. Uh, for example, for doctors, health or medical professions, lawyers, maybe bankers, but not only. It depends on your needs. Uh, as I mentioned, it, keep, it keeps the formats and the formatting um, is also uh, secure. It means that it processed in a secure way. To be 100% secure, you need to download your machine translated document from the e-translation website. You can also request your translation to be delivered by mail, but knowing that emails are not a secure channel and they are not encrypted. Uh, more on uh, the security aspect and all the other aspects you can read in our service level agreement we, and the link to this SLA you will find at the end of my presentation. Um, OK, this is all nice and easy, but who is entitled to use currently e-translation? So uh, public administrations uh, can access e-translation. Then uh, digital uh, service infrastructures and Connected Europe facility participants. Thirdly, university language faculties, 
uh, then EU freelance translators and uh, lately uh, also SMEs. Uh, so the first one is the web interface access, which uh, all the five constituencies uh, can use. Uh, here you can uh, have 100 requests per day and, and one, uh, 10 megabytes or uh, 300,000 uh, sentences. Uh, access to the web service or to the API or the so-called machine-to-machine -machine access uh, actually, or currently, uh, it's only public administrations uh, who can have this kind of access, or the second constituent, self participants, but only for the uh, project duration. Um, let's go to the next slide. Yes. So before rolling out e-translation to SMEs, we wanted a solid consultation and testing with SMEs from a wide range of economic sectors across the EU, Iceland and Norway. We received several feedback, also this one, which you can see on the screen. Um, there was a representative of Italian SMEs who compared our action with the abolition of the roaming charges in Europe. Uh, why e-translation for SMEs? In a simple sentence, I would say to help them to deal with documents in languages they do not master and facilitate cross-border information exchange and ultimately support their day-to-day -day work. The next slide shows you the main findings of our survey and testing we conducted. So over to 2008 replied to the consultation uh, mainly through the e uh, 90 percent expressed interest in free secure automated translation system provided by the eu over 70 percent find automated translation useful for their business 47 percent plan to start cross-border bris for which translation will be useful and an interesting finding also almost 40 percent of the consulted smes had not previously used automated translation at the same time we conducted a pilot testing with uh, over 600 smes and uh, the main findings are that uh, 83 percent find e-translation usable 59 percent thinks the tool is fit for purpose for their businesses, and 50% expect to use e-translation every day or every week, with monthly usage expected to be around five documents per SME. Okay, uh, on the next, yeah, so the pie chart here shows you that SMEs came from the most various sectors and not only SMEs working in IT, language technologies or translation. Uh, so most uh, of the SMEs, 28% uh, came actually from the manufacturing industry. The next slide uh, shows you the size of these SMEs. And uh, so here we speak about small companies most of the respondents had one to nine employees, followed by SMEs having 10 to 49 employees. Okay, next slide. Uh, please. Yeah, so we asked the SMEs about their use cases. Uh, and it seems very wise how SMEs assess the possible use cases we proposed them in the survey. They would like to use machine translation for understanding websites, gathering information, for example. Most of the respondents then clearly prefer human translation when, for example, negotiating or signing contracts. 
indeed, e translation doesn't want to replace the expertise of human translators, but it can help overcome language barriers by offering translation. If you are interested to read more, more about our consultation or testing, or simply how SMEs relate to language technologies, please look up and consult or report at the link displayed on the next slide. Exactly. So here you have the link to uh, the um, report and also to be published a spreadsheet with the replies. So you might be able to generate country specific information. The next slide will show you how to access the translation. So to access the web interface, uh, SMO through um, the uh, dedicated landing page, which is the first link. And then uh, you arrive at the, the second link here. Uh, you need to have a so-called EU login in order to be able to register, but it only takes a few minutes. And then you are ready to translate. On the landing page, you also have a tutorial so that you can get familiar with e-translation and get the most of the system. The following two slides will show you how to use e-translation. So once you are registered, you will be able to connect from this website. It offers text snippet translation up to 2,000. So it's a Google style. Uh, snippet translation, or you can use the document translation. If you select the document translation, you simply drag and drop your document or documents uh, in the most common formats. And uh, as already mentioned, uh, you will get your document back in the same format and with the same formatting. Um, OK, the next slide shows you how to set up your translation requests. Um, so before sending your translation, you need to select the languages, of course. You can select all the languages at the same time, if you wish so. Uh, and then you can select the best suited domain for your text in order to produce a more accurate machine translation. Uh, the first one, so which you can see there, EU formal language. This domain is intended for legal text. In case you need to get a gist of non-legal text, you can do general text domain. Also, in this document, you to consult or service level agreement uh, for which the link will be displayed at the very end of the presentation. We recently also created public health engines specifically to be help uh, during the COVID-19 crisis using data from the European Chemicals Agency and the European Medicines Agency. The domains and engines are reg regularly fine-tuned and further developed, so please don't hesitate to check in regularly. We are approaching the end of the presentation, so let's see on the next slide the future plans. Uh, how can e-translation be further improved and further extended? So with more languages, indeed, uh, extension of uh, to other languages is planned. As I already mentioned, we recently uh, introduced Russian and Chinese, and uh, um, in the coming months and uh, years, we will uh, come up with other languages. Okay, so uh, there will be more tools. Uh, we work on, no, no, sorry, the, please back to the previous one. So we work on website translation, text analysis, other tools for text summarization, speech recognition, speech transcription, and chatbots. Um, 
through the European Language Resource Coordination, uh, or shortly ELRC, uh, you can help us feeding the CEF automated translation platform and uh, e-translation. And uh, we also work on uh, integration of e-translation into digital, digital services. Um, uh, but as mentioned, uh, so e-translation, uh, the web service is currently open uh, only to public administrations. On the next slide, you will have a look at my sector's brochure in case you like to know more about multilingualism and uh, language solutions we work on. Uh, but don't stop here. Let's see to the next slide. And here are the uh, promised links. So um, the first links, uh, how to access e-translation. Uh, you can see also a link to e-translation projects uh, and the service level agreement where you can see who can access it, how can access it, uh, how to register, how, how to ask for access, uh, and uh, what are the terms. So uh, how much data can you translate with e-translation, and so on. Um, and uh, if you don't find uh, the service you need, then uh, we, you could uh, also consult the catalog of services, which can be very helpful for those, especially who are looking for automated website translation. And uh, here comes the final slide. Indeed, thank you for having followed this presentation and the whole webinar with the EEN and uh, all the participants. Uh, but uh, one more thing. If you need uh, so this kind of service, don't hesitate to relation, and uh, more importantly, don't hesitate to share it with your partners and uh, around you. Thank you, Tobias. Yeah, Miklos, thank you. Th thank you very much. Um, this was a great impression. And and uh, I mean, you're in the lucky uh, position, uh, maybe to s say it in that way. I mean, it's very impressive to have a um, to have a summary of one billion sentences uh, in a database. I mean, this is a huge number. And it is great that um, this knowledge is available now in a form of open access to the people uh, in Europe. And this comes to the first question um, that arrived. Um, so uh, the question was also um, if the e-translation tool is also available for those that already have an EU login and if they just have to click somewhere and or do they have to, uh, is it another EU in uh, login account? So if you already have an EU login, you are lucky because uh, the access will be uh, much quicker. Uh, then you go to the, uh, so I don't have the slides in front of the so registration page. Uh, if you go back to the, yeah, do you go, you simply go to the registration page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you here you go to the, uh, no, 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 it was there, fine. Uh, okay, or here, you go to the, the second one, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, so at the bottom here, this web game. ATC Europa EU translation public welcome. Uh, you put your email address associated to your EU login. Choose uh, uh, so your status if you are an SME or public administration or uh, university language faculty and so on. And then you just uh, tick the box and, and you you translating. All right. Exactly. Okay. But if you have an issue login, it will be much more easy. Yeah. Okay. There is also another uh, three questions in short. Um, um, is this service also available for uh, companies not from the EU, maybe from Africa? Are they also able to, to log in? 
uh, actually, uh, no, uh, there is a geo blocking. So you oh. can normally you can access e translation only from the EU member state. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. So uh, there is a, a gap uh, still existing, maybe to, to formalize it a little bit diplomatically. Um, and also another question. Um, one um, attendee of our online seminar um, checked already the, uh, the website and uh, found out that uh, the, the, um, the interface is only available in English. And is, will it be possible um, and will be there also other language available? For the translation, actually, actually uh, uh, so the um, promotional web page is available currently only in English and in German because of the uh, EU presidency. Mm -hmm. uh, but the registration web page is available normally in all the languages. Uh, it detects the language uh, of your browser. And it will be automatically paid in that language. And then the e-translation uh, web interface is uh, available in all the languages and normally right, you can choose. Them. All right. Okay. Right now I can't hear you. All right. Okay. So there is another technical question, but I think we will. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now it's again. No, no. I, I, uh, I think I heard it. You answered, I heard partly that uh, okay. you just mentioned that the e translation um, first interface is only available in English language and in German language at the moment, German because of the uh, presidency. The and and that the the i mean the the front end after the introduction page will be also in all other languages all right um there is also another technical question i think we will um, answer this question in the chat after on because we are a little running out of time um so uh we will answer your questions and thank you very much miklos for your uh, input i think the en will support your service uh, because this will be a very good chance for European SMEs uh, within the single market. And the question how other uh, SMEs from other parts from the world could contribute, uh, it is like a political question. But uh, hopefully we'll, there will be a good solution for all of us. Um, thank you very much. Okay, so the third person today um, is uh, Gorka Moral. Uh, he is from the uh, European Agency um, for, um, for Safety and Health at Work in Bilbao. And welcome you to, to our online seminar. I'm looking forward to, and, and I know already that you have very interesting and impressive uh, information for us as well. Gorka, the stage is yours. Good morning, thank you. My name is Gorka Moral. I'm a technical leader for the online developments at the European Agency for Safety and Health at Work. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, as uh, EUOSA is the acronym, we, we are an information agency of the European Union. And basically what we do is to research, uh, collect, analyze information that we offer through through the internet which uh, is set to be our main communication channel already in our founding regulation in 1993 so it's clear that we have to offer a huge amount of information through this channel since uh, well nearly 20 20 years ago more than 20 years ago already from our first website next slide please and uh, Yes, here. Yeah. So, as you can see, we have different websites. We have, um, well, not only those ones, those are the, the ones that are driven through our translations tool. Most of them are in 25 languages, all the EU official languages, but Gaelic and Icelandic and Norwegian. But the last one is also in Russian, uh, Catalan, and Turkish, due to well, some collaboration uh, agreements we have. Anyway, we have an awful lot of pages on each of them. 
not only that, we are offering as well other uh, online uh, tools like uh, data visualizations, uh, e-guides. We have an OS wiki as well, which uh, have some uh, part of the contest translated, but they are not driven by the tool we have invented. So which was the problem? This is, this is the, the need. So we need to offer multilingual content uh, because our, one of our aims is to reach to the workplaces across the union. So we can, as explained in the first presentation, it's very important that we communicate in the very language of the people. Uh, on next slide, this is the reason why we have to offer, find a solution for it. Exactly, we had only one people who was really editing the website, all the websites. So it was absolutely impossible to do it manually. Uh, at the very beginning of the history of the NCGS, because we didn't have so many pages and not so many translators, but after a while it was completely impossible to do. So next slide. We had to put a bit of imagination. We need to make some research. And we have to talk to people in other agencies, other institutions to find a way to cope with all the information we have to translate. So by our also founding regulation, we have to work with the uh, Centre de Traduction, the Translation Centre of the European Union uh, which is based in, in Brussels and Luxembourg. Uh, there we, they, they work with a uh, specific software. So the research we made was, okay, how do you work? Which, uh, which is the, the, your workflow with the software you're using? And with that information, we also check what other agencies were doing at the time. So with a bit of creativity from our side, we, we get to a, a system that allowed us to, well, you can go to next slide already, allowed us to extract information from our CMS uh, system, uh, which is Drupal and currently. So we extracted the pages in, in all the content we wanted to translate into XML format where we added some additional information, like uh, where, where this information is in the website, which website, where in the website, which is the number of characters, which is the way we have to control how many translation pages we have to pay. And, and uh, this way we were able automatically later on to upload the translation job. So we made a translation job sent to the translation center. With the software they use, they are able to translate the text only without affecting to the formatting of it, without affecting to the HTML code that is below that. So we allowed also the, the translation center to upload the files to our system to check that things were properly displayed after the translation, that effectively they had not touched any of the uh, coding or that a very long translation might affect the a button that went from to two lines or went too long and, and have an impact in the in the interface. So all this allows us, as I said, to import the information to the system and the system automatically places the information where it should be in each of the language versions without a further human intervention. So all we have to do is to just click a button to publish that information once we check that it is okay. And it is done. This, yes, no, no, you can go to the next slide. So this, this solution uh, got, uh, was awarded uh, in 2017 by the European Ombudsman. They launched some, some awards. One of them was excellent, excellence in citizen customer focused services delivery, which sounds a bit weird. <laughs> But at the end, what the, the prize was given to the collaboration spirit and, and the user-oriented solution we had provided, which, uh, well, we are quite proud of it as well, of course, and was, was a good example. As I mentioned at the beginning of, of this cooperation between the, the Translation Center, the, the UiPod, the Intellectual Property Office in Alicante, and ourselves. So, with the information we gathered from them both 
and we were able to to build this information, which was an improvement of something that already EUIPO had already made. So at the end of this, uh, we can go to the to the next slide, please. So at the end of, of, of this, uh, we built this uh, software in Drupal. Drupal is a, an open source uh, software. This means that uh, anything that you develop for an open source platform has to be open source as well and be offered to the public. It has to be published and available for anyone. So all of, I, I don't know how technical you might be, but I guess you will need some some uh, developer for for you to look into the specifications I, I have put here. Uh, anyway, it is a module made for Drupal, the CMS that you can already use. Uh, it includes the ability to export the, the data in XML, the ability to create a file out of it that you can download and send to whoever, and the ability to reimport that. Uh, uh, but it does not include the workflow we, we developed. The workflow was was um, created directly using uh, Drupal features. So uh, we created uh, the workflow is, is quite uh, straightforward. So we can create uh, we have an editor uh, that can create uh, this uh, translation job. Once created, we send it to the translation center. Then the translation center can upload that, can review, can set the, the work as reviewed, so we know that it is already ready, and we can recheck and then publish uh, the content when ready. So basically, this is it. I don't know. I guess uh, you might have questions. I have tried to be quick and factual. I don't know if any there is any question. Just just let me know. Yes, thank um, Gorka, thank you very much. And once again, also for the work and, and uh, for the creativity, uh, creating um, uh, a software and an engine to translate or to, to organize the translation of um, all these European official languages and even all of the smaller regional languages. Um, there is one very specific um, question from um, the Vice President of the Bundesverband der Dolmetscher und Übersetzer e.V., uh, located in Berlin. Um, first of all, thank you for um, your question. Um, it is about um, a correctly translation of complex texts. Um, I think there will be... Uh, well, we are running out of time. Um, so my suggestion is for that, that we will answer this question, um, that we will send you this question directly to Miklos and uh, Gorka, because Gorka is also um, managing the documents like uh, the in, in, in health and e-health. So this has to be a very accurate uh, language. And um, my suggestion is that we will um, will summarize your answers as a separate text document at the end of the presentation, because I think this is a really, really interesting question, and um, uh, but have to uh, have to close our session somehow. Otherwise, um, I would uh, to show you the the question in our um, chat function. And there you will, you are able to read it, Gorka and and Miklos, and and then you can decide if you want to answer. Um, in the meantime, while you're reading uh, the question of the um, Bundesverband of uh, der Dolmetscher und Übersetzer e.V., um, I would like to. Um, Thank you already, um, all the participants, uh, for being here and for spending your time in our online seminar about multilingual websites. And of course, I would like also to thank my partners from Portugal. I hope to uh, pronounce um, the, the, the names all correctly. So um, I would like to thank the Associação Empresarial de Portugal also my colleagues from um, Poland, um, Warminsko, Marzurska Agencji Rozwoju Regionalne Spółka Agencji w Olsztynie. Um, also, I would like to thank um, Industry und Handelskammer in Offenbach, which provides us with the um, feedback survey. I would like to ask you to answer this because we need your feedback in order to improve our um, 
services, but also our content we would like to discuss with the companies. Also, greetings and a thank you to the Business Support Center for Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises in Ruz, Bulgaria, and uh, the Steinbeis uh, 2i um, GmbH in, in Karlsruhe. And of course, once again to Marcel from Zenit, um, from Northern uh, Westphalia, um, who supports us with uh, technical um, details. And also um, to Matthias here from our e-learning uh, center, uh, that we were able to, to, to realize this uh, first test um, of our webinar, or not webinar, but uh, of our online seminar. So Gorka i um, Miklos, did you have the possibility to read your, uh, the question, first of all? No, I cannot see it in the, oh, the chat. Oh, okay. Ah, it's in the t but I sent it already. Okay. Um, so um, this is like a technical detail. Uh, I was uh, afraid that something will not uh, work. But um, I hope that uh, I think we should uh, clarify the, this very complex question afterwards. Um, what I will promise is that we will. Um, talk about this question. Maybe you will get direct uh, contact. If you have other questions, um, we will um, answer your question as, um, as a member or as a staff um, of the Enterprise Europe Network. And a last question came in, if we, if we provide the PDF. Yes, of course, we do because we think um, open access is very important. And so at the moment, it is my last task uh, to, uh, to thank to my speakers. Um, so maybe coming from uh, starting at the last point and then coming back to the first point. Um, so Gorka, thank you very much for your uh, for your participation, for your hard work and um, for your presentation. We will, I think uh, the EN members will also inform our clients, maybe also city administrations, um, about your tool and hopefully your work will help also other people, um, like a thank you. new audience uh, with this seminar. So thank you very much. Miklos, thank you also uh, for your presentation. It was very uh, interesting and um, of course uh, we will inform our clients on regional level about uh, the possibilities and I think that there will be other opportunities um, to cooperate in other or on other events uh, for promoting your tool, um, which is very helpful. Also from a point of democracy, as you mentioned already, because the access to language is also um, a very useful and helpful and needed access to participate participating in social life. So thank you for that. And all the translators, of course. And um, okay, okay, thank you, thank you. as well you. to you. Thanks. To the um, translators who feed the system. Yeah. Pardon me? I just wanted to, to, to tell that thanks to the translators yeah. who, who feed them with data. Yeah. yeah, 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 the translators in the end. So we should mention them once again. Thank you for all the translators uh, supporting us with uh, and providing the knowledge and their energy. Yeah, this is a really important thing to uh, not to forget them. Um, okay, so thank you for your time and okay, okay, Are, thank you as well for your um, input about um, um, your, or your perspective on on multilingualism on websites, and I think uh, this will encourage us to 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 support the SMEs to translate their websites and to think about uh, cooperation with other countries and also other continents. I mean, this is the main task of our Enterprise Europe Network work. Um, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. A pleasure to be here. My pleasure. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Great. And uh, once again, thank you for the audience, uh, for your participation. We, I'm sorry we 
take uh, took us 10 minutes longer but um i hope that you had nice impressions please fill in the survey help us to um be more precisely um in future events i'm once again i'm sorry for um for not switching off the microphone in the beginning but i was too nervous um but this was a, it's a small technical detail um i hope uh, that you have an understanding for this it was a pleasure for me to organize in this webinar and marcel i think you can now switch on uh, switch off the YouTube um, live streaming. Thank you very much. Bye bye.